All right, Inspire Beauty, it is Monday. That means one thing, team training. And tonight we are talking all about follow-ups. It has been something that I've been researching in my own business. And as I started to implement and just see a different, a lot of different strategies for follow-ups, I wanted to definitely share uh, the golden nuggets that I've been finding with you guys. So that's what we're chatting through all tonight. Tonight, the three things that I want to address. First, I want you to understand the power in the follow-up. By the time we're done tonight, I want you to realize like, ooh, if, if I haven't been following up, if that hasn't been something that has been on my daily list and I've been spending more time in other areas, I might want to invest in a little, uh, maybe change the ratio up to see where uh, I can give a couple minutes to the follow-up. The other thing is to become aware of a clear follow-up method. So I want to point out for you what's working for me. And then after that, I want you to begin implementing a follow-up system that works for you. There are some people on our team that are really great with paper and pencil. I am a paper and pencil girl. I will always walk around with my tracker and my pencil. Not a pen, you guys. I'm a human. I make mistakes. And when I tell people that I use a pencil, sometimes they laugh at me but I'm certain you guys aren't laughing because you're my tribe. Um, <laughs> and you are all old like me. Uh, but I definitely, I'm a paper and pencil girl, but I also do know the value in having uh, everything in a digital system because that does help me sometimes when I'm on the go with just my phone in my hand. That helps me a lot of times do things quicker, like when I want to send out an email right? Um, and so a lot of times too, I don't have to flip through a bunch of papers when I have a digital system in place. I can just type maybe in a search bar for someone's name and it'll bring up their information. So I see the value in that, but I am old school. All of my lesson plans as a teacher were paper and pencil. And so I will continue to rock that in this business as well. Couple statistics. I shared this with some of our leaders last week, um, but I wanted to share this with everybody because this just blows my mind. Okay. First of all, let's talk about some sales stats in terms of contacts. 48% of salespeople, you guys, never follow up. That's almost half. That's almost half of salespeople never go back for a second touch, a second contact. 25% make that second contact and then stop there. So they ask them once, they go back for the kill the second time, no dice, they're done. 12% only make three contacts and stop, and only 10%, you guys, make more than three contacts. So the, the few are doing the majority of the connections, right? And in terms of that, on the other side, on the sales side, only 2% of sales are made on the first contact. I want this to ease your mind tonight because when we sit, you know, when we send out that invite to somebody and, and first of all, yes, it is, it can be scary in the beginning of your business to send out an invitation to somebody when you are not well versed in it and when you have not practiced that art form over and over and over again, right? But only 2% of the sales are actually made on the first contact. I know right now we sent out this free workout to a lot of people, right? Like a lot of people got a free workout last week. But of those a lot of people, have you heard back from all of them? Not me, but that makes sense right there, right? 2% of sales are made on that first contact. So if I've got a whole lot of people that I sent out this email to, I'm not gonna get a whole lot of response back, especially because it's free, you guys, right? Uh, more so that it's free. There's less value attached to things that are free, obviously, okay? Um, but then if we go down, you guys, 80% of sales are made on the fifth to 12th contact. Now, when we talk about follow-ups tonight and we get into kind of my method for how I follow up with people, you're gonna see that it gets to a place in a conversation where people get placed on a monthly follow-up list, right? Like every month now I'm going to return back to them after I do my very first, you know, five to six contacts with them. They're going to be placed on a monthly contact list. If this is true, that 80% of sales are made between the fifth and 12th contact, let's just go to the 12th contact, and they're on a monthly list, that means that's a year of me reaching out to them. If you think about your own business and how long it took you to join the group, I'm probably certain that whoever talked to you, it probably wasn't with the first conversation they had. 
it probably took numerous conversations. And maybe that was just to join a challenge group. But then maybe it took even more conversations to join Inspire Beauty. And then once you're on Inspire Beauty, how many conversations did it take to generate interest in actually doing the coaching side of things or the business side of things, right? So all of those like little mini stair steps are more follow-ups, more contacts, more touches, more connections, right? And so like the, the do all end all, like the coach that signs up with a challenge pack and and starts coaching and becomes like the best rock star coach you've ever had all on day one, yeah, that's in the 2%. <laughs> that's not the norm, right? So my question at the bottom is, are you really sure they don't want to join you? Or is it just not the right time? My guess is it's not the right time yet. No follow-up, you guys, equals no business. I have hit SC10 plus every month this year, except for one month. And I am actually really mad at myself now that I look back at that, because I'm like, dang it! Like, there was actually like a, a, a $1,000 incentive that I missed because I missed SC10 one month. So I'm kind of kicking myself for that. But when I look back and I'm like, how did I hit SC10 pretty much every month so far this year? Follow-ups. They are not first time touches. They are not the first time I invited somebody to a group. They are people that I have been either reaching out to for a long time, or they're a customer that fell off the wagon and I picked them right on back up. Okay. But they are follow-ups. They're people that I reach continually back out to. First things first, you guys, if you aren't working from a list, you're missing out on a lot of people. When I fly by the seat of my pants, you guys, I get by the seat of my pants results. Okay, when I'm working from a list and I've got like clear people that I'm going to reach out to in front of me, that's when my days run so much smoother. I get so much more done and so much more productive and I have way more time for things beyond just inviting. Okay, now some of the ways that I work from a list is I will go um, and all of my invitations today, for example, came from a transformation post that I did the other week. So that's a way to run from a list is to create a list based on people who are following your story, following and liking on your content uh, and things like that. You can also have a list like your followers or your friends list. Um, but I would start to take that off of Facebook. I wouldn't run from like, let me click on my friends list and see who I'll talk to today. I would make sure that that is transferred to some other location and that you've sifted through the people on that list that you're going to talk to, right? Um, like I said, most people don't commit the first time that's called normal join the club. There's like 7 billion of us. It's just, it just brings comfort. I think in knowing that it's normal that people don't commit the first time. Okay. These glasses that I'm wearing, you guys, I bought, um, really nerdy, uh, <laughs> blue light glasses because I stare at the screen all day. And so I thought, let me see if this helps like my head and like with my eyesight and just like all that stuff. So at the end of the day, my vision's not like super duper wonky. So I bought these nerdy glasses. Now I have been looking at websites for these types of glasses and on Amazon, I've been searching for months now, you guys. Thank God there's not somebody out there. Like, Facebook is stalking me in that way. But thank God, like, this isn't a human being that's like, you want to get those glasses yet? You want to get those glasses yet? Because, like, I would be so annoyed with them. I was doing this on my own accord. But it took me probably, like, five, six months of searching for these glasses until I actually hit purchase last week on them, on Amazon. Okay? I didn't commit the first time I looked at them. They've been on that wish list for a while. Okay? We all do it. Don't leave business on the table, meaning you invite somebody and they don't answer you because maybe they saw it while they were running around. Maybe they're, you know, they were in the middle of something and, and their kid bothered them or whatever. And they just didn't get to answer you. Maybe not because they were trying to, but they just, they missed it. Maybe they missed it in their inbox or they got busy. And then we don't res respond to them and reach back out to say, Hey, did you see my message? We're leaving business on the table. Okay. Those have to be followed up with. Follow-ups, in my opinion, can be and should be the bulk of your conversations. <clears throat> I'm going to show you how here in a second. So ask yourself, what is your system? Do you have a way that you know, like, okay, this is how I've been following up with people. This is how I know who to follow up with. And if you don't have one, my encouragement is that after tonight, you're going to be able to create one as soon as possible for yourself. Get over the idea too tonight, guys, that you're bugging people. We've got to get over that notion. That's a fear. That's like a lie. That's a, that's something that we've, that, that's just planted in your brain. 
okay, from past experiences, because you're not bugging people if you genuinely want to help them. You're not bugging people if you truly have a belief in what you are selling them. And you're not bugging people if you know that you're never going to leave them hanging, right? Like when I can tell somebody straight to their face, hey, I'll be here next month. Or, hey, I'll be here on January 1st. You'll still be watching me do my journey. And I know with confidence that I will be doing that. I'm not bugging somebody because they will watch me on January 1st. I'll still be doing it then. But if you're kind of like one foot in, one foot out, and you don't really know if in a month you'll still be showing up to your business or showing up to Beachbody On Demand, then yeah, you probably are bugging people. So it is really in your approach to your personal business and how you, you know, how you show up to your self-care. If you want your business to grow, if you want to hit success club, if you want to grow a team, if you want to just pay off your Shakeology each month, whatever it is you want to do, hobby money, rent money, party money, bar money, I don't know, <laughs> whatever you want to do, guys, you have to follow up, okay? I hope I've made that clear. So let's keep it simple with this. On, you know, if you have a tracker, obviously, you know, you, you can track however you want to write people's names down. But if I, I would suggest, this, this is a, a small suggestion, to create a contact list or a master contact list, master follow-up list in a Google Sheet, okay? And I'll show you how to do that in one second here. But I keep it very simple. I'm going to show you mine. It's got their name or their Instagram handle. If I have their email or they've given it to me in our conversation, it'll be in there as well. But usually guys also, once I get their email, they go over in a Google streak for me because that's a really um, easy system I have over there. But you can also keep and store their email in this. Um, I like to jot down where I'm having my conversation with them so that I don't get confused. Obviously, if it's an at handle, then I know it's Instagram. But if I know their first and last name, you know, I want to make sure I know where I'm, I'm having this conversation. So whether it's Instagram, Facebook, maybe the conversation is happening directly in email. Um, and then I have a column for what they're interested in. I don't fill this in for everybody, but some people I know, like they reached out to me because they want to know about Inspire Beauty or they reached out to me because they want to know about, you know, unicorn juice, right? And so I can write down what they're, maybe they're interested in if I already know that. Follow-up date, this is going to be very important, and I'll show you this in a second. And then what do you want to say to them next? This is also very key. I'm going to show you this. This is just a little snippet. We'll actually go out of here and go into mine in one second. So when do you follow up? Well, first of all, any conversation that I have uh, that's geared towards an invite, I always want to follow up 24 to 48 hours later with a, hey, did you see my last message, if I don't hear back from them. So anybody that I sent a message to today, okay? Uh, for example, uh, at Tracy Pitts Noggle, <laughs> I don't know, that's her handle. At Tracy Pitts Noggle, I put her name into my spreadsheet. So she's on here, because I jot her name down when I'm in the moment, right? Um, but then her name's in my spreadsheet, and I've got the follow-up date set for tomorrow. And tomorrow at some point, what I say to say to her next is, Hey, I just wanted to see if you got my last message. I know I tend to see things and forget to reply, right? Because I sent her an invite. Now, maybe she doesn't reply to that. I get ghosted. I don't, she doesn't answer like that she saw it. Maybe I can see that she saw it and she never responds. And she never actually told me she was interested in the challenge group. Maybe I just asked her because she liked something or took a poll, but I don't actually have her email or her goals yet. That Tracy Pitsnoggle, she's going to get, uh, after 24 hours later, when I see, hey, did you see my last message? The next follow-up I'm probably going to do is a month from now because I don't have her goals. I don't know anything uh, about, you know, if she truly wants to do this or not. So I'm not going to bug her in a week. I'm not going to bug her in two weeks. If I don't have, like, if I don't have a solid answer from them, it's going to be a month later that I'll circle back. Hey, just coming back, keep you in the loop, right? But if I have their goals or they gave me a solid, hey, yeah, I'd love more information. And I say, cool, let, you know, can I have your email so that I can send you some information? Now this is when I would move on to weekly check-ins. At a week from today, two weeks, three weeks, and a final check-in at four weeks if I don't have a solid yes or no at that point. So week-long intervals. After that, you guys, after a four-week period of checking in on them, and maybe I don't hear anything back from them, that's okay. That's not what in my control, right? I'm controlling what I can control. So after four weeks 
of checking in. After that, now they're going to go on a month-to-month check-in, and I'm going to let them know what is happening and keep them in the loop each month, okay? So now I bug them once a month. <laughs> okay, so how do we follow up? I'm going to show this to you in one second, but first, just uh, let me read through this. So we either are going to sort our Google Sheet by the date, and I'm going to show you that, or you can write in your tracker the next follow-up for that person. So for example, Tracy Pitsnoggle sent her an invitation today. In my tracker, I have them all predated. Everything's predated in my tracker. So what I can do is I can flip to tomorrow and I can write her name under follow-up for 24 hours. Or if I wanna do 48 hours, then I go two days later, right? And then now when I open my planner or my tracker to that date, I already see that Tracy Pitsnoggle's on there. I don't have to try to remember back two days ago, a day ago to like, hey, did this chick respond to me? I've got her name written down right in there. So if you're a paper and pencil kind of person, you just wanna stick to your tracker and you, you live on this, do that, okay? After you write down their initial contact of your invite, go flip the page 24 hours later, write their name down that you're gonna follow up with them. And do that for everybody. So you don't miss anybody, okay? If you wanna sort on a Google Sheet, I'll show you this in one second. And you guys, this whole slideshow I'm gonna to give to you so that you can reference back to how I do this um, if, if you're like mind blown in two seconds here when I show you. So let me open up my Google Chrome. Okay, so here is my follow up like a boss tracker. Okay, I've got their name, just what I showed you. Email is in here if I do get their email. If I've asked them for their email, look what I write here. Like the second that I told her today, hey, yeah, absolutely, I'd love to give you more info. What's your email? I type in waiting on email. So that way, the next time I come back to her, uh, when her follow-up date comes up, I know I never got her email. I need to remind her, hey, did you want me to email you more information, right? And follow up about that. If I have their email, I want to make sure I follow up that they got my email if I don't hear back from them in 24 hours. So there's so many ways to follow up with somebody, you guys. Um, you know, I don't just send out the invite and then that's a follow-up. There could be a follow-up to, I asked them for their email and I want to follow up. I, I don't want to lose this person in the, in the feed, right, or in my, in my message inbox. So it's important that for everything that I do, I track what I need to do next. And that looks different for everyone. So once I make this sheet, and it's really easy, you guys. If I go into my, um, into my drive, Google makes this so easy and user-friendly for us because I personally could never figure out how to do Excel. Like Excel was a foreign language to me. And when I opened up Google Sheets one day to try to play around with it, I was like, oh my gosh, you have literally taken all of the framework. Like I don't have to have a PhD in like science to know how to do Excel. So you could call this your, it's loading, 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 contact list, okay? And then up here, name, Tab. Did I get it? My computer's a little slow. Yep, there it is. Okay. Name. And then here would be email. And then over might be where I met them. And then over here would be what they're interested in. And then follow up date. And then what to follow up with. Okay, those are the main things that I wanna do. Now then you could space these out, make it whatever, you can color it, whatever font you want, make it all pretty after that. But I would go in here and then I would put their name and then in follow-up date, once I have an actual date in here, so let's say 10, 15, 18 is today, okay? Once I have a date in there, I can double click on it and the calendar will pop up, you guys. So once I have a date on there, I can then, select a new date okay so like if the next person I talk to tomorrow and then oops, next person I talk to tomorrow and I need to follow up them in 24 hours I can select 
24 hours later and then I can say did you get my email 24 hours later I know that I'm gonna ask them if they got my email right so let me show you that's how you would make it um, crash course in that okay over here you guys back to the one that like that I'm using when I select so all this is kind of organized because when I finished it today, I um, it was all in, in order and I changed dates as I was speaking to people. But if you see, when I click in this box here under this FX, there's like a, a blank box in the top left corner. When I click in that, it selects everything. And I'm again, I'm gonna, this is all written out for you in the thing, but I just wanna show you in action. And I cl click on data, sort range, when I click data has a header row, what that means, you guys, let me cancel out of this. That means that this data has a header. So I don't want to include that. That's the reason I select that because otherwise it would alphabetize it with everything else. And I don't want it to alphabetize the first row, the header row. So I go to data, sort range, and it has a header row. So then this tells this don't sort the header. And I want to sort by, I don't want to sort by their names. Remember, I want to sort by my follow-up date, right? Because I want it to tell me who do I need to follow up with right now. So I go down to, there's like a gnat in my freaking office right now. <laughs> I go up to follow-up date, follow-up date, and sort it. Bada boom, bada bing. Unselect these. I don't want it selected anymore. And look, tomorrow morning on 1016, I have all these people to follow up with all the way down to here. And I know what I'm going to ask them already. I'm going to say, did you see my message to these people? This person, did you join the group? Actually, I just saw that she joined the group. So look at this. I'm going to change her follow-up date to the 19th. And I want to ask her, what shift shop pack are you going with? Right? So now that's updated. So tomorrow I don't follow up with her about did she join the group. I know she did. The next thing I'm going to ask her is on Friday, I want to know what pack she wants to go with. Okay. So I always also go in here and write, what am I going to ask them next? Tomorrow, I'm going to ask this person because I haven't heard from her and I haven't heard from this one. I'm going to say, hey, is it better if I just check back in with you next month? These people, I want to make sure they saw my message. So I'm giving them the 24 hour follow up. Okay. This one. We're in the middle of a conversation about what's keeping her from being committed. So I want to make sure we keep that conversation going. Okay. So all of them are a little different. If you go down here, these are people who got the free shift shop workout. I've already asked them once. I need to check back in and see, Hey, like, did you try it? Right. They haven't answered me. Um, do, 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 do. Uh, right here, guys. See now down to this person. This is where I would be coming to a one month check-in. This is like, so, so that's the person that I've already followed up with them numerous times. Now they're a month out, right? Okay. So by the time we get to the 19th, now they're a month out. Okay. So I just wanted to show you that kind of in action, but it starts at pencil and paper for me. But then what I do, you guys, and I, I've been trying really hard that I cut, that I, I set aside like 10 or 15 minutes at the end of my paper and pencil time to then go and transfer what I did over in here. So I'm not going back, forth, back, forth, back, forth. I'm doing paper and pencil the whole time I'm working. And then once I'm done, I'm gonna put in all the names that I invited and put them with a follow-up for 24 hours, checking in to see if they got my message, just in case they don't respond. If they do respond, then I can, you know, rearrange how that looks. But I do that afterwards, okay? It's a separate thing after. I see stuff in the chat. Yes. And, and we can have a create party too, you guys. Like if we want to do a, like make these together at some point, I just didn't want to run out of time on the content for tonight. Okay. But we can absolutely like do that together. If we wanted to even do that on a Tuesday night or maybe on a Wednesday, instead of the power hour, we make this tracker together. We can definitely do that. Okay. Okay. Um, and then the directions, like I said, how to sort is right here. Highlight the column, clicking in the top, Oh, that should say left, sorry. Top left arrow, go to data, sort range, click the box, data has header row, like I showed you, and then sort by follow-up date, and then it'll sort it for you. Okay, so 
these are a couple of my scripts that I say after 24 hours, right? Just checking in to make sure you saw my last message. I know I glance at my messages and forget to reply when things are busy. Are you interested in learning more about this? Either way, let me know. So that's one thing I might say after 24 hours. Follow up one after I have their goals or after they've already told me they're interested. Maybe they didn't give me their goals yet, but they said I'm interested and I, I'm you know, waiting on their email or I got their email. I'm gonna check back in with them after a week, right? So they, I sent the email out. I might do a 24 hour email to make sure they got the email, but if I still haven't heard back, then I'm gonna follow up a week later at max, right? At max a week later. Uh, ask them, if, you know, hope they've been having a good week, check in with you and see how things are going. It sounded before like you're ready to make a change and finally get going on those goals. Obviously you can edit this if you don't know what their goals are yet, right? And I'd love to help you out. Are you ready to get started? Okay, then what do I do right after I send that? I change their date for another week out to remind myself that I wanna message them in another week and I'm gonna send them the next follow-up, which would be something like this. How have you been? Hope all is well. I know we chatted before about possibly joining one of my groups, and I think that having this support is exactly what you need to get going on your goals. I know that starting is scary, but not starting is even scarier. I'd love to have you in one of my groups to hit those goals. Hope to hear from you soon. Send, change their follow-up date for another week out, right? And then I'm going to change, okay, send follow-up number three. Guys, I have this already scripted for you. Do not, you don't have to screenshot this or write it down. I have this already in a document for you so that you can save it on your phones, your computers, wherever you need, okay? I know, you love me. Okay, follow-up number three. Um, so this is after three weeks, right? Maybe you still haven't really heard back from them. Maybe you got their goals. They haven't replied to your email. We're not judging them. We don't know what's going on in their life, right? For all we know, you're the only consistent thing in their life that cares about them right now. So keep sending that, yes? So you ask them how they've been, hope you're doing well. Just wanted to check in again because I know you said that you were interested in one of the challenge groups and registration. This is where we put some urgency, you guys, right? Even if it's not closing tomorrow, it's closing tomorrow, right? Even if you have 70 spots left, you only have two, okay? So this is, in, in follow-up number three, this is where we start to like nudge them a little with some urgency. After I send this follow-up, I'm gonna change them in my, in my sheet. Another week later, I'm gonna give them one more chance. This is where I give them the out, okay? Just wanna check back in with you one more time. I know you expressed before <clears throat> that you wanted to join a group, but it looks like now isn't the best timing, which is totally okay. This is where we give them that out, where we allow them to not join, right? I run new groups every month. and would love to have you in my next group if timing is better then. What can I, what I can do is check back in with you next month before my next challenge group. And obviously at this point, you guys, if it's been four weeks, you're probably enrolling right now for your actual next group. So then you can put them on the roster for like the next next group, right? Or whatever looks good for you. And so you're just letting them know that you'll reach out to them when you're getting ready to rock and roll for the next group. And then you change the follow-up now for about a month out, okay? And you, set, and, and you set the follow-up date for about a month later and you say, you either check in and, hey, how's your progress been since the last time we talked? How's your self-care been? Have you found something that's been working for you, right? You check in and, and see how they're going. Or go, you know, get a pulse read. Go feel out their social media. A month later when that follow-up hits, go check out their social media. What have they been up to for the last month? You know, I have embarrassingly reached out to people, you guys, who like that day before announced they were pregnant. And I didn't look at their stinking feed or like, or worse, like maybe somebody passed in their family or, you know, like I have literally done the dumbest things in this business, you guys. <laughs> and it's my heartbeat to prevent you from doing those things too. So like a month later when your follow-up pops up that it's for time for their one month check-in or their month check-in, go and feel them out first. Go feel their page out. Is this, is this good timing to maybe even talk to them? Is their life situation, is something going on in their life situation? New thing happening, new season developing, right? Feel it out. And then this is one that I like to send to people just to let them know, like, I'm inviting you back in. I let them know, like, I know last month wasn't the best time for you, but I have a vested interest in helping you get on track with your, and if you know their goals, you can put their goals right there, that you have a vested interest in helping them do that, right? Um, if you don't actually know their specific goals, then you can just kind of put a generic self-care statement there. 
and then ask them, did you make plans to get started on your journey? If so, I'd love to hear about it so I can cheer you on. There's so many people that'll message me back and be like, oh my gosh, Brittany, I joined Orange Theory Fitness, or oh my gosh, Brittany, I, I started eating better with my husband, and like, we're really going well right now. And that gives me an opportunity to just be a friend and to just be a good person, right? And be like, oh my gosh, that is so awesome. I'm so happy for you. Like, and I can either take them off my follow-up list at that point. Like, when I, um, in the sheet, you can, and you can do it here too. You could highlight. You see I've got people highlighted. Um, I can explain that here in a second. But in the spreadsheet, you can also highlight someone. And if they're like a hard no, like they're done, like they joined something else or they're done kind of being followed up with, then highlight them a certain color so that you just know, like, even if that pops up in your follow-up, like, they're not really interested, right? You can do that. On this, on my tracker today, you guys, my purples are people who answered me back and were, were talking about the challenge group or in conversation. The blues are people that, that answered me back and it was like a, it wasn't a hard no, it was just like a not right now kind of no. And so those are circle backs for a month later. Obviously, there's no red. A red would be like, or a pink would be like a hard no. And a green would be, they bought the challenge back, they're ready to go. So I have a highlighting color system because I'm just very visual that way, you guys. Um, but find something, I encourage you, find something that works for you and your business. People know, or people want to know that you care. So when we have this whole idea that we're bugging people, I like to think about it differently. That I'm not bugging them. I want them to know that I care about them that I want them to know that I'm here for them. And I want them to know that this is something that has changed my life and the lives of tons and tons of women that I've worked with over the years. And that I could see their life being impacted by it as well. Everybody in the world, you guys, has the same deep desire to be seen, to be valued, to be loved. And follow-ups are your way of showing that. They're your way of showing others that you see them, that you value them, that you do love them. You know, because maybe truly they're not getting that in their actual day-to-day -day life. So lead with love, build the relationships, and stay genuinely interested in people. When you do those month check-ins, they don't have to be like, hey, I'm just checking back in to see if you wanna join this month. You don't have to cut right to the chase. Like I said, go to their page, feel them out, see what's been going on in their life, check in on life, right? Sometimes when I see that I've left a conversation hanging, I apologize for that. Like I said, don't leave business on the table. I totally do that at times or I'll miss a message or I'll see it and forget to reply or whatever. And then I realize, oh, I never responded to that person. So I like to say something like, um, you know, hey, I'm so sorry that, I, that, that we never got to really continue our conversation, but hey, how is everything going for you lately? How's life? You know, and just like, let's put that on the back burner for a second. I wanna hear about you. Again, you aren't bugging them. You are just thinking of them and want to help. And what helps with fear? If this is an area that you do stress about, like I don't want to bug people. I'm so nervous they're going to like be offended that I reach back out to them. What helps with this fear? Personal development, you guys, obviously, right? Getting your mindset plugged into something really strong to help you strengthen that area uh, will really help you. But I also know that in all of the follow-ups that I do, you guys, rarely do I get somebody who says like, stop emailing me or take me off your list. Like that's a very rare thing and out of the number of people that I, like it it does happen like I, I've had somebody say that before not recently but it it's not you it's them and it's it you move on because there is yes we are humans yes we love people yes we are working um, to serve others but at some point it also is part of your business format and your business model that you can't just get stuck on that one person that you know wasn't happy with your message that day, right? So just keep that in mind if you do come across, you know, that one, um, it, it, it's, rant. it's very few and far between. So that's it for that. And then I wanted to show you guys really quick, I'll share back to my Google Chrome. So in the follow-ups, like I was saying, let's say today, like when I, let's say tomorrow when I reach out to her, and I asked, should I check back in next month? She's like, no, stop talking to me. Then I would probably give her a hard red. <laughs> I'd probably take you just drag and highlight across. And then if you want, you can color code here too. If this is like, you know, oh, she bought her challenge pack tomorrow. And I agree means go. So I want to make sure that she gets added into the group. And then I don't have to worry about, you know, I can either remove her from this master list or whatever you want to do, right? I could, I could do either or. Um, so yeah, that's this. And then I do want to show you, let me move our faces out of the way. I 
made you guys a cheat sheet that I will share with you once we're done. But this is how to create the spreadsheet, the um, sections that I created for the spreadsheet, what I have titled them, uh, and also the directions on how to um, sort your list. I have it right here for you. And then these are all the different follow-ups I shared with you tonight for um, all the way from 24 hours, making sure they got your message, all the way to one month check-ins, okay? Now, obviously, again, these are all very, like, rarely, rarely, okay, this one, yes, this is one that is very scripted that I send on the daily, but, like, rarely is it, like, this person gets follow-up one. A lot of times it's, like, you know, again, did you get my email? Or, hey, what, what's keeping you from being committed to things? Or, hey, you know, what, what's your favorite ice cream flavor? That's a really great question to find out if people, what kind of Shakeology somebody likes. What's your favorite ice cream flavor, right? Um, but a lot of times, you guys, these follow-ups, they are a, a nice script, but if you, you know, in my actual follow-up list, you can see that a lot of them aren't actually like, give them follow-up number one, right? Because a lot of times it's not perfect for that scenario, right? So I hope that helped. When do I follow up again with no response? Free workout and sent message asking. So the thing is, because we've got the flash sale this week, Natalie, those people I sent follow-ups to at the end of last week because I wanted to get them in the flash sale and I hadn't heard back. I am going to send them a follow-up. Um, probably, it depends on when you sent it. But like for me, it was before the weekend. So I'm going to send it probably tomorrow, Wednesday, and then let them know in that next follow-up, hey, I'd love for you to try this. I'm not trying to rush you, but we do have a flash sale with $20 off this week only. And we're starting this next group on Monday. So if you are interested, I'd love to hear back from you. And just like give them a hard, like, you know, this is, if you tried it, you know, great. Because after this week, if they try it, like cool beans, but our group's already started, right? Um, yeah. And then those people would be maybe like a month after that. Like then I would change them to a month. So after this week, anybody who didn't, who got the free workout, but didn't commit, they would be somebody I would keep in mind for the next launch of something. Cause they're obviously interested in fitness. They want to, they're interested in something, but, uh, they're just not ready to commit. So maybe like the next launch, like when transform 20 comes out, I'm going to follow up with those people. Hey, I got another workout for you. Right. All those free workout people. Every time I have another free workout, I'm going to want to give it to them until something speaks to them. Or they go. I kind of did the same thing. I sent several out before the weekend and I'm glad I followed up with them 24 to 48 hours later because some of them, the link wasn't working or mm -hmm. some of them, because maybe they had done the three day refresh with me before they got that 14 or 30 days for BOD for free and BOD's not letting them sign in mm -hmm. to view the, for the free workout because they're an existing customer type of thing. I, I, I'm still trying to figure some of that out with a couple of them, but it allowed me a little bit more interaction with several people for them to know I cared and that I was looking into stuff and trying to figure it out because I kept joking, you know, it's free, you know, I, I want y'all to see.